Wrapping up module two here with lesson 23, we are again focusing on solving equations using algebra. So we're gonna keep practicing, kind of expanding a little bit on the steps we started doing in lesson 22. So if you struggle with that a little bit, that's totally okay, just don't give up. The more you do it, you're gonna see that we're doing the same thing over and over, the more comfortable you'll become with it. So let's look at that first example. <coughs> Excuse me. The youth group's going on a trip to amusement park in another part of the state. The trip is going to cost each group member $150. That's our total. That's $85 for the hotel and two passes. Notice I didn't say one day combination entrance and meal pass plan passes because that gets us really confused. We're like thinking, do we have to put a one in there? No, it's just the two passes. What are the passes? One day combination entrance and meal passes. So we need to write an equation letting P represent the cost of the park pass. So in that $150, two things are included. Our hotel right? Costing me $85. And then our park passes. Oh, there's my sloppiness as always, right? My park pass. And we're going to get two of those. So two times P. So P represents the cost of one pass. I want two of them. And that's a total of $150. Now again, you've seen me do this before and you're going to see me do it again. Not always, but a lot of times I write what I know off to the side because it makes writing an equation that much easier. I'm going to pay $85 for my hotel. I'm going to also buy two park passes. Altogether, that's going to give me a total of $150. Okay, this $150 includes my hotel and the two passes. Now, now just down here, then it says solve algebraically. I can do that. Okay, so let's think of the steps we learned in our last lesson. So again, you don't have to, but I like to put my little wall down there around my equal sign, because that way when I talk about each side of the equal sign, I know what I'm talking about. Is there anything to simplify here? No, don't say 87P. We don't know what this P is. This is representing a number. It could be one, it could be 20, we don't know. So if I don't know what this is, I don't know what this term is. This could be two times one, it could be two times 10. So nothing to simplify in the left, nothing to simplify in the right. So remember then we do order of operations backwards. Find out what you're solving for. I'm solving for this P, it's my unknown. So I'm gonna solve for the two P to start. Now, we gotta change our thinking a little tiny bit. Don't just go, well, this is plus 85, that means I have to do minus 85. No. Okay, I want you, and because if this was a negative 85, we wouldn't minus it. I want you to look at this 85, knowing that's what we have to get rid of on the left, and thinking, what can I combine with 85 to make it go away? So yes, we are subtracting 85, or you can think of it as combining it with a negative 85. Whatever we do to one side, do to the other. Okay, that cancels out. I'm left with 2 times P equals... 150 minus 85 is 65. Now this is two times P. I've done the addition and subtraction level. Now let's go multiplication division. This is multiplying. So I undo that by dividing. And we always divide by whatever that coefficient is. Two divided by two is one P. That's what I wanted. Whatever I do to one side, I do the other. 65 divided by two is 32.5. We know we're talking about money though, right? Cost of a park pass. So I'm gonna write it as $32.50. These steps are going to stay the same anytime we have a two-step equation. In fact, they're going to stay the same for any equation. We're just going to keep adding more steps in front of it. So let's do another example. Charlotte receives a weekly allowance from parents. She spent half of the allowance at the movies, but earned an additional $4 performing extra chores. She didn't spend anything else, and she finished with 12. What is her weekly allowance? Okay, well, again, how do we, we have two things going on here. She spent half and then she received four. So we can take half of her allowance. How do I represent half of her allowance? Well, her allowance is A. So half of that means multiply. So half of A. And then we also have what she earned additionally, right? And it says she earned an additional $4. And she finished the week with 12, okay? 
So if we take half of our allowance, add four to it, we get 12. Okay, now let's solve it. Same steps we always use. Can I simplify each side here? No, because I don't know what A is, so I can't add half of A to 4. And 12, nothing to simplify there, right? So let's come back here to our A. I'm solving for half A, and I'm getting rid of whatever's being added on or subtracted to it. Well, we have this plus 4 right here, or positive 4. How do I undo that? How do I get rid of that 4? Well, I combine it with a negative 4, or it's plus 4 minus 4. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. I bring down my half of A. This gives me zero. I always double check that. 12 minus 4 or 12 plus a negative 4 is 8. Now basically what we're saying here is half of what number equals 8? We can divide each side by a half because that's what we do, right? It's multiplying. We undo it by dividing. But I want you to remember this means 8 over 1 divided by a half. So instead of dividing, we could have just multiplied by the reciprocal, okay? And we get 16. So we get A equals 16. What does that mean? It means her allowance is $16. Okay, so again, we're problem solvers. We're figuring out an unknown. Now her goal, Charlotte has this goal here, right? She wants to save $100. She's $100 for her beach trip in the summer. We know she has um, $16, right? Her weekly allowance is $16. Um, we want to write an equation to determine the number of weeks she must work to meet her goal. And we're letting W represent the number of weeks. So um, every week she earns $16. After one week, it's 16. After two weeks, it's 2 times 16. After three weeks, it's 3 times 16. So I'm going to take 16, and I'm going to multiply it by the number of weeks until she has saved 100. Again, we're just multiplying by the number of weeks. Or the, we're trying to figure out the number of weeks she needs to save to get um, $100. So this is just a one-step equation. Sweet. Okay. So I still have each side here, right? But I'm just solving for W. I don't, there's nothing being added or subtracted on, so I can go right to the multiplication and division step. So it's multiplying, so I'm going to divide. 16 divided by 16 is 1W equals 100 divided by 16. If I grab my calculator, which I already did, and divided that out, I get 6.25 weeks. Okay? So what does that mean? Sorry, it's weeks there. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think really we get allowance like uh, 0.25 or a quarter of the weekend, right? You get it maybe every Monday if you get an allowance, right? You get it every Monday or every Saturday or whatever it is. You're not going to say, hey, it's been like, you know, one fourth of the week here, dad. Can I have some more money? So how many weeks is it going to take her? Is it going to take her six weeks or is it going to take her seven weeks? Well, let's try it. If I did 16 times 6, that's going to be $96. Is that enough to go on the trip? So even this might round down to 6. We can't always do it by rounding. Because if I go 16 times 7, that's $112. I have more than enough then. Okay? So it's going to take 7 weeks because... Charlotte won't have $100 after six weeks. So it's more than just solving the equations, guys. We need to be able to solve those equations. And then we need to be able to decipher what our answer means because really the point of an equation is to help us find out something we don't know.